So uh, now we know that biological light is essential for our general sense and well-being, we should also think about how to define the biological light quality. Well, since it's the cyan part of the spectrum that is captured by this IPIGC in your eye and used as input for the SCN to synchronize with the natural dark light cycle, the CIE defined uh, two new uh, metrics to express the content of cyan into an artificial light solution. They are called the MDER, that's the melanopic daylight efficacy ratio, and the MEDI, which stands for the melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance. So the MDER is in fact a measure that indicates how well the spectrum of a light source is able to activate this IPIDC in the eye compared to a reference daylight source called D65. So if you have a cyan-enhanced spectrum that has a higher M there than a cyan-depleted spectrum. So let me give you an example. For instance, a light source with 2700 Kelvin has an M there of about 0.35, while a light source of about 5000 Kelvin has an M there of 0.8. So the target M there MDR for indoor environments is one. That's the M there of daylight. So the effectivity of a light solution to support circadian health actually depends on the total amount of light that falls into your eye. And this is called the MEDI the melanopic equivalent daylight illuminance. You can easily calculate the MEDI by taking the photopic illuminance at eye level times the M there. The minimal requirement for MEDI is uh, to prevent the biological discomfort is 163 lux, uh, at least. And if you can reach that, you can earn light well points for circadian lighting design. So this is only a start. So given the fact that people will hardly experience any daytime light when they are working, the tenant in science is actually that the more the better.